Greetings, fellow YouTuber. My name is Tim. Greetings fellow YouTuber, my name is Tim. It helps if you turn up the mic when you start talking. Welcome once again. This is Gainer World Live. My name is Tim Gainer and this is everybody's favorite hour of the internet's greatest dumpster fire. This is Gainer World Live. My name is Tim Gainer. I appreciate you hopping along with us on the train that stops nowhere but fun. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for joining me. I certainly do appreciate it. Um, it is, um, it, it's, been, it's been a little bit of a week, and um, we're going to get into a lot of it tonight. Um, but if you're new to this show, uh, please do me a favor. Keep your expectations really low, okay? Because um, basically what this is, is a show where we really don't do anything, per se, uh, what we do mainly is we talk about things that have been happening in the news over the course of the last week and basically talk amongst ourselves. And this is what we do. Uh, we do that by means of this cool little thing right here. That is the chat. Now, normally, if you're watching us live right now, you know the chat is way over there. Uh-uh, we bring it to you right here. So you don't have to strain your neck and strain your eyes. You see, we think we're medically... We, we care about your health here at Gainer World Live. Um, if you're watching on the replay, of course, you don't have the chat over there now, do you? <laughs> so that's why we do this here. So be that as it may, um, we just hang around and we talk about certain things. And uh, if you are new to this, please, by all means, do us a favor, pop in, say hi. We'd love to hear from you. We really, really would. So it has been... Um, yeah, to say the least, it has been one heck of a week. Um, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. This has been uh, one of those weeks that um, you just say to yourself, "Yeah, never in a million years." Uh, but we'll, we'll get into it as we always do, the way that uh, we do when he puts on the glasses. I know I look really studious, don't I? <laughs> I look like a complete and total jerk. Well, let's call it what it is. But be that as it may, let's go ahead and um, get into everybody's uh, favorite part of the show. Kicking it right off. Pull out your dance cards, kids. It is time for the Deadpool Report. Let's get into it, shall we? Kicking things off this week, um, a couple of these that I know nobody had on their Deadpool cards. Uh, the first one started on Monday, and that was uh, legendary actor Treat Williams, who passed away. Um, he starred as, um, you might remember, he starred as a New York City neurosurgeon who moves his family to Colorado on the, the uh, legendary series Everwood. Remember that? Yeah, back in the 90s. Uh, he appeared in films like uh, The Prince of the City, Miles Foreman's Hair. He died Monday, uh, sadly enough, in um, a motorcycle accident in Vermont at the age of 71. 
Um, his agent, Barry McPherson of APA, confirmed his death in a statement to uh, the Hollywood Reporter. He, uh, Williams was a, uh, a citizen of Manchester Center, Vermont. And uh, the story goes that he was on a, um, a motorcycle. He was wearing a helmet, was wearing a helmet. And he collided with a car uh, going on Route 30 near Dorset. Uh, this is according to the Vermont State Police. Um, there was an initial investigation that indicated that the driver of the car, and this is from the Vermont State Police, quote, stopped, signaled the left turn, and then turned into the path of a northbound 1986 Honda VT700 motorcycle that was operated by Mr. Williams. Williams was unable to avoid a collision and was thrown away from the motorcycle. He suffered critical injuries and was airlifted to Albany Medical Center in Albany, New York, where, unfortunately, he was pronounced dead. Uh, the driver of the car had multiple, had minor, rather, minor injuries, not multiple, but minor injuries. He did not need to be hospitalized. Um, but uh, Treat Williams was kind of the heartthrob back in his days. Um, if some of the older fans of the show, they might remember his... Um, when he played uh, Xander Drax in The Phantom back in 1996. Um, he uh, worked on The Eagle Has Landed in 1976, 1941 with John Belushi in 1979, Once Upon a Time in America in 84, Smooth Talk in 85, Dead Heat in 88, Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, Deep Rising, The Deep End of the Ocean. He was nominated for... Um, he was nominated for an Emmy in 96 uh, for his role of Michael Ovitz in The Late Shift, the old uh, HBO movie. And um, y you might remember that movie. That was the one about, you know, between David Letterman and Jay Leno when uh, Johnny Carson was retiring. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And he also uh, starred as Andy Brown on... Uh, four seasons of Everwood from 2002 to 2006. Um, he worked on Broadway, working in shows like Over Here, Once in a Lifetime, Pirates of Penzance. Um, and he is survived by, <clears throat> pardon me, he's survived by his wife, Pam, uh, whom he married in June of 88, and their children, Jill and Eleanor. So a uh, really sad thing going on there. Treat Williams, uh, one of the great actors, Great modern actors, really. And going back quite some time, as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, unfortunately, gone. Killed in a motorcycle accident. Man, that sucks. Uh, remember, wear your helmets, gang. Gone at the age of 71. Uh, that was on Monday. And then, um, just last night, we learned of uh, the death of one of Hollywood's greatest, one of London's most elite, as a matter of fact, Glenda Jackson, who won Oscars in her career and then uh, became a member of the House of Commons in the UK. She passed away last night in London at the age of 87. Um, she died after a brief illness, according to her agent, Lionel Larner. Uh, according to Variety, uh, he said, uh, Glenda Jackson, this is a quote, Glenda Jackson, two-time Academy Award-winning actress and politician, died peacefully at her home in Blackheath, London this morning after a brief illness with her family at her side. Um, she recently completed filming The Great Escaper, in which she co-starred with Michael Caine. Um, Lerner said in a statement... She, um, she, she didn't do too shabby for herself in her day. Um, she was in, uh, 1967's Marat Saad, Sunday, Bloody Sunday in 1971 as the member of a bisexual love triangle. She was on TV, uh, in the Patricia Neal story. Um, then she took on uh, one that I remember very well. I think she did a magnificent job on. And that's when she played uh, Queen Elizabeth I in a miniseries in 1971, a TV miniseries called uh, Elizabeth R. 
in which the character turned from a teenage girl into an old woman. So uh, she had a lot of stretching to do, and that she did. Uh, did a really magnificent job. But then somebody <laughs> got the weird idea, and she got the weird idea, actually, and she said she was moving into politics, and some kind of went, yeah, sure, Glenda, whatever you say. It's all good. Not a problem. Um, she served as a member of parliament between 1992 and 2015. Uh, made a lot of friends, made a lot of enemies, but hey, that's what you do. Uh, Glenda survived by her son, newspaper columnist Dan Hodges. But yeah, one of the one of the Hollywood elite, one of the London elite, is gone unfortunately. Uh, Glenda Jackson, actress, Emmy award winning actress, and member of the House of Commons, gone at the age of eighty seven. So yeah, it was. Um, it, it, it was totally one of those weeks. So, uh, yeah, mark those off in your card. That's this week's Deadwood Pool Report. So, yeah. A lot of things going on this week. A lot of things that... Um, I I I got to be honest with you. I I, I changed I changed the, the title of the show um, rather quickly this morning uh, while we were doing the final production for the show, and um, there's a reason for it. You, you you'll notice the pattern as we go through um, go through everything this week. But um, yeah. Of course, we've got to start right at the top here tonight by talking about that one a gigantic piece of news that everybody is talking about. It's the one that is blowing up the tubes, all blowing up the airwaves. It is the end of an era. That's right. Pat Sajak is retiring. Now, everybody else in the rest of the world, this may not seem like a really big deal, but to the folks in the States, the folks in North America, um, this, is, this is big news. According to Rolling Stone, let me give you the whole story here. According to Rolling Stone, um, Pat Sajak, longtime host of Wheel of Fortune, is retiring as of next year. Pat made the announcement Monday that he'll step away from the show following its, the end of its upcoming season. He tweeted, quote, Well, the time has come. I've decided that our 41st season, that man's been doing this for 41 years. Okay? That's a long time. Uh, the time has come. I've decided that our 41st season, which begins in September, will be my last it's been a wonderful ride. I'll have more to say in the coming months. Many thanks to you all. If nothing else, it'll just keep the clickbait sites busy. <laughs> so, so even Pat knows what's going on with this deal, okay? Um, th- there's, there's no definite word on who is going to replace Pat, but we'll get into there. There's a lot of speculation, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um. But Vanna White, of course, his longtime partner, co-host, I guess you could say, uh, she also tweeted, quote, when we started Wheel of Fortune, who could have imagined we'd still be at it 41 seasons later? I couldn't be happier to have shared the stage with you for all these years with more to come. Cheers to you, Pat Sajak. Um, Suzanne Preet who is the executive vice president for game shows for Sony Pictures Television, said in a statement that Pat that Sajak will continue working with the team as a consultant for three years after uh, his last show, after his last um, stint as the host. Um, he did this in 19... Well, wait, no, he, he didn't really start it at the beginning. 
Um, according to Rolling Stone, he took on the hosting duties in 1981 after he replaced Chuck Woolery, who hosted the game show from its debut in 1975, and he'd been a staple ever since. Um, he's won Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Game Show Host 1993, 97, and 98. Now, the big question, of course, is who the heck is going to... Who, who, the, who the heck is going to replace him? And you know the rumor mills have started already. The rumor mills have started already. But I read something today, or actually I heard something from um, a local television station here in the city, uh, WFLD, Fox 32 in Chicago, saying that... Um, there might be a forerunner already for as a replacement. Um, let me just stop in and say, Amu City has popped in saying, I'm here. What have I missed? You've missed everything, Amu City. You've missed the best 15 minutes in the history of the internet. Hands down. Hang your head in sorrow and shame. Um, so there is one forerunner. There is one front runner for the replacement for Pat Sajak on Wheel of Fortune. And I got to admit, I kind of like this idea. And I have a feeling this is where it's going to go. Um, Fox 32 in Chicago, Fox News, um, Fox News Digital has reached out to reps saying that it's possible that Ryan Seacrest Maybe his replacement. He's among some of the he's among some of the ones that are considered by Sony. Uh, Fox News Digital has reached out to Wheel of Fortune reps for secret reps for comment. He has not said anything. Uh, don't forget that he just left his hosting duties on uh, Live with Kelly and Ryan. He moved back to L.A., which is where Wheel of Fortune is taped. Now, it also should be mentioned here, and I don't have the picture with me, although there, uh, there are pictures of this online, that it turns out that Ryan was also, in his much younger days, a close friend of Merv Griffin, who, anybody with any Wheel of Fortune knowledge whatsoever knows, was the guy that invented and developed the game. And produced it originally. So I'm thinking Ryan's a pretty good bet for this one. Um, they're also saying that possibly Sajak's daughter, Maggie, who works as the show's social media correspondent, and is also, you might have seen her, she stepped in for um, Vanna White a couple of times in 2019, could take over for dad. And here's the real kicker about this. Vanna has not said if she's going to continue on after Pat steps down. So this is going to be an interesting year. This is going to be an interesting year. Pat Sajak, 76 years old, retiring after next year on Wheel of Fortune. I'm old enough to remember when they gave you the remainder of your account on a gift certificate after you spent the rest on the ceramic Dalmatian. And if you're a real Wheel of Fortune fan, you'll remember all that. If you're not, hey, I can't help you. So. Um, Amu City has popped in. I am here. What have I missed? And then he comes right out and spoils the show and says, have you talked about the new Beatles track? Okay. Let's, um, um, I beg your pardon. And occasional guest co-host Chris King has popped in and said, on a service merchandise gift certificate. Was it service merchandise? I believe it was Spiegel, Chicago, Illinois, 60609. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. That was a long time and many hallucinogens ago. Um, 
So anyway. Okay. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? As soon as this was announced, my phone, my phone blew up. My phone literally blew up. Chris saying that Spiegel was in the early days. I started watching it when it was surface merchandise. Okay, all right, that makes sense. <coughs> and little sister from the FL or the CO or wherever her little gypsy butt is taking her these days. She has popped in to say hello. All right, let, let's catch up on this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the advancements in AI, artificial intelligence, and especially in the field of music. And we a great example with this was a song that I played that somebody had done. Um, let me interrupt. Chris is right. Also, fun fact, Spiegel in the 90s had one outlet store in Back of the Yards neighborhood. I do remember that. Um, and by then it was purchased by the Eddie Bauer Corporation. All right. So if you need downfill jackets, Eddie Bauer, that's your man. Um, so we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about AI and its impact on music. And I played a track that somebody had had used AI on. It was a remake of. It was a remake of um, Paul McCartney's the title track to Paul McCartney's new single from 2013. And I'm not going to play it now. You can go back. You can find the find the episode in the archives of of this YouTube page, and. Um, in the middle of this song, all of a sudden, John Lennon's voice popped in, and it was perfect. It was perfect in every way. And I've heard other examples of it where um, there's there's one where John Lennon sang love, and Paul joins him in the middle of the chorus, and in the middle eight, and so forth. There's a lot of it going around these days, a lot of it going around. You notice I make it sound like a virus. But it's getting a little weird now. It's getting a little weird because Rolling Stone has mentioned this. NBC has mentioned this. Loudwire has mentioned this. I got a hold of it. Everybody was telling me about it. But now I'm telling you about it that Paul is saying that there's going to be a new Final track. Let me repeat those words because it's very important. The final track from the Beatles will be released at the end of this year. A lot of people thinking, what is the song going to be? Because he's not saying. Paul's not saying. But there is a lot of of speculation on that. And we'll get to this in a minute. But what has happened is Paul, Sir Paul, used artificial intelligence, AI. And you remember, we talked about how people are going to start using this in some of their archive recordings. He extracted the voice of John Lennon to make a new recording from an older time. Now, what older recording could that possibly be? Um, be that as it may, uh, Radio Force Today show on Monday, Paul is calling this the final Beatles record, and he explained that AI technology was employed to extricate John's voice from an old demo recording to complete the tune. He said, and this is a quote from John, according to, Lo to Loudwire, we just finished it up and it'll be released this year. Uh, little sister saying, I can guess what it's not going to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, here, here's, here's, what, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what, here's what the odds on favorite of this are right now. Think back, um, older viewers more fans uh, think back 
to the days of the Beatles anthology. Back around 95, 96. Now that's when they released um, two songs that they and Jeff Lynn produced off of a couple of demo cassettes that Yoko Ono had given the band, the surviving members at the time of the band, of John singing two songs. Those two songs, of course, being Free as a Bird and Real Love. They redid those, they re-imaged them, and they recorded them as singles. A lot of people don't know that there was a third song that was going to be used. It is a song that John wrote in 1979 called Now and Then. Originally, they had worked on this during the anthology sessions, but then George found out he didn't like it. And it just turned out, it just did not turn out well. There was a lot of static electricity. There was a lot of, a lot of static in, in the recording. Jeff Lynne had a hard time you know, producing it and depaging it. And uh, they just dropped the subject. And Paul, for years, in fact, in a couple of documentaries, has said openly, I'm going to nick this particular track and I'm going to finish it. So a lot of sources are saying that it could be a reworked version, an AI version of Now and Then. So, and it, it, it's, it's creepy. It's creepy. I, I ain't going to lie to you. If you were with us a couple of weeks ago, um, you, heard, you heard what AI can do. You heard what AI can do, and yeah, just as I suspected, when we heard those songs, I suspe- we suspected that somebody's going to come along from the Beatles camp and nick these things. Well, Paul isn't just nicking stuff, he's just inventing stuff, which I kind of expected, because he, I mean, he's, he's an innovative guy. Uh, Little Sister's saying uh, technology's come a long way since anthology. Right, exactly. Peter Jackson, who, you know, the whole demixing and, and AI thing that he had to do for Get Back is, is proof of that alone, to be honest with you. Um, which, by the way, according to, and um, I also do want to thank my Florida correspondent, for helping me out with this one because um, there was in fact a a related story to this. And and, I mean, the timing of this, the timing of this couldn't have been any better today, just today, according to entertainment weekly, we got a, um, we got a story having to do with uh, the Grammy Awards. The, uh, yeah, the folks that uh, do the Grammy Awards, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, uh, they released, according to Entertainment Weekly, released their new rules for this year's awards, um, including new guidance on the role of artificial intelligence in music. And the official word from the Academy is, quote, Only human creators are eligible to be submitted for consideration for, nominated for, or win a Grammy Award. A work that contains no human authorship is not eligible in any category. The human authorship component of the work submitted must be meaningful and must be more than de minimis. Such human authorship components must be relevant to the category in which such work is entered. So, yeah, that, that's, that's the Academy's take on it. R2-D2 is not going to win any Grammys. Period. Uh, by the way, the Academy also may change it to the total number of nominees in each category, reducing the number of nominees in Best Album, Song, and Record of the Year and Best New Artist from 10 people, or 10 items, down to 8. 
Uh, additionally, to be eligible in the nomination of Album of the Year, a music creator must now be part of at least 20% of an album. Hmm. Interesting. Previously, anybody who contributed to the album, producer, songwriter, engineer, or featured artist, would be included in the nomination whether they worked on one song or the entire album. So there you have that. Um, and they've also renamed a couple of uh, categories. Three new categories were announced earlier this week. Best African Music Performance, Best Pop Dance Record, and Best Alternative Jazz Album. So there you have it. Um, it'll take place in the winter of 2024, and the nominations will be, as we are all with bated breath awaiting, this November. So there's that. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of things. Lots of... Lots, oh, lots, of oh, things going on in the wild, wacky, wonderful world of music and arts and things like that. A lot of, uh, <coughs> pardon me, a lot of, um, lot of reunion stuff. I mean, you know, the Beatles getting back together, kind of, sort of, you know, and then also, you know, if they are going to use now and then, I hope that they're going to use part of those sessions for the anthology because that means that, uh, George Harrison will be on it as well, which is kind of essential if you want a Beatles record. And Robin Newman saying good evening, popping in. Hey, Robin, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Always glad to see you popping along in here. Um, half hour, and you have missed the greatest, you know, I mean, you guys just keep missing all this great stuff. I can't, I can't, I, I don't make the rules. I just create greatness. <laughs> um, <laughs> little sisters say, I'm waiting for new gender categories like best trans artist, best non-binary artist. <laughs> oh, Amy City saying it's good. They're putting guidelines in place now. Before the tech goes completely mainstream. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Because it's already out of control as far as I'm concerned. And Robin making his excuses. I'm old. I was napping. I, Dude, you know, it's Friday night. It's 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, you don't nap. You just go to bed for the night. You do the warm milk. Do the oatmeal. Take the melatonin. You know how it is. Hey, speaking of old, and speaking of people getting back together all at the same time, see what I did there? Um, Geritol. <laughs> Whatever works, bro. Whatever works. It's all good, okay? It's all good. Um... Amy City saying a whole bottle of melatonin and an entire bottle of x Lance toilet rule. <laughs> ah, here we go. We open the can of worms. Little sister say, I'm old in an hour and a head. No excuse. And eh, she's got a point there, Robin. I'm sorry, man. Uh, the captain's getting back together with Tennille. No, no. Bigger than that. Bigger than that. We've been talking about this for a little while now. Um, we've been talking about this, but now it's getting a little bit bigger. Well, um, Peach is getting back together with Herb. No, Peach is... <laughs> no, it's not that. No. Uh, no, there is no Village People reunion. No. Um, Apparently, I, we, we've been talking about this for a little while now, that the Stones are in the studio. The Rolling Stones are in the studio. And they're creating a new album. And things have gotten as crazy as to people actually thinking that Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr may be, record, may be on this album as well. Um, Noreen Henry popping in to say, hey, hey, Noreen, how's it going? I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Jefferson getting back together with the Starship. No, but they may be getting back together with the airplane. Hard to say. Um, Bill Wyman, former bass player, 
for the Rolling Stones has apparently, according to the New York Post, reunited with the band after 30 years of not being in the band. Bill is 86. (laughs) Let me repeat that for the Stones fans who really want to feel old. You want to give Robin some stuff? Give you all give you all a pat on the back. Robin Phil Wyman is 86 years old and is going to be featured on a song on the Stones upcoming album according to the New York Post and the London Sun. They reported Friday this album is going to be a tribute to their pal Charlie Watts who of course died in uh died last year um after a long battle with cancer. The story goes that Mick Jagger reportedly invited Wyman to the recording sessions in L.A. A source told the outlet, quote, Bill hasn't seen the band. Bill hasn't seen the band together for years, but he loved Charlie and the records really attribute to Charlie. So he couldn't say no. Um, Yes, Charlie's drumming is going to be on there of along with Will Jordan. The great Will Jordan is going to be on the album as well. Um, and it's going to be the Stones' first studio release since his death. And like I said, later on, later on, and as I said earlier, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr reportedly are playing bass and drums on the album as well. Uh, the Post has contacted representatives for the Stones and Bill Wyman. They've got no comment yet. Uh, Bill left the band in 1993. It's been that long. Um... Yeah, and this is going to be the Stones' first album since they recorded another great album. I don't know if anybody remembers this. Back in 2016, they did their blues album, Blue and Lonesome, which was a terrific album, by the way. Um, So, yeah, Um, here we go. Mick and Charlie. Um. Bill had said that he'd claimed he had no regrets, although he admitted it wasn't the easiest transition. Um, and, and apparently they left the door open. So yeah, there you have it. Bill Wyman. A real blast from the past playing on the, the soon-to-be-released Stones album with Paul McCartney. With Ringo Starr. Um, yeah. Could be, um, could be something else. Could be something else entirely. Checking the tote board here because people are actually losing their minds over this. Um, is the captain getting back together with Daniil? No. Is Peaches getting back together with Herb? No. Is Jefferson getting back together with Starship? No. Airplane? Yeah, maybe. Um, they're going to digitally bring back Robin and Maurice for a Bee Gees release. I, at this point, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, is Mariah getting back together with Tommy Matola? Not a snowball's chance in hell. Um, <laughs> or Nick Cannon, for that matter. Um... <laughs> Afternoon Delight is being re-released. That's it. No, that's the sign of the apocalypse right there. I don't care what you tell me. That's not funny. Afternoon Delight or anything. No. Somebody blow up that thing in Denmark with ABBA. Um, Jake and Elward, Jake and Elward are getting back together. No. But as long as you bring up that subject... Um, we're getting the band back together. Uh, four fried chickens and a Coke with some dry wise toast. Spinal Tap getting back together. No, but I'd love to see that. Nick Cannon getting back together with any of his baby mama. <laughs> I doubt that very much. Um, but as long as you're bringing that up, you mentioned Dan Aykroyd. This does deserve to be mentioned. Um, there is a site, in case you didn't know this, if you are a fan of Ghostbusters, 
whatever the franchise, there is actually a, a website called GhostbustersNews.com. It gives you all the latest on what is happening, on everything you want and need to know about Peter Venkman and the boys. And apparently, the big news right now, and this is a quote now from GhostbustersNews.com, Um, As production of the upcoming Ghostbusters sequel continues in the United Kingdom, Dan Aykroyd, who has previously confirmed his involvement in the film, has been busy making the rounds, being asked about the film and promoting his award-winning Crystal Head Vodka brand at the same time, which has nothing to do with Ghostbusters, but I guess they needed to throw that in there. In an exclusive interview with the Metro, Dan shed more light on the sequel while affirming the speculated involvement of Bill Murray. Talking about the production, Dan, who earlier this week had highest praise for co-star Patton Oswalt, who will be in the new, um, who will be in the new um, movie. Um, with said, quote, we're three quarters through filming, which means it's got to be edited, mixed, and CGI has to be put in. It is strongly insinuated that Bill Murray will be returning to the sequel. He has been seen multiple times in the UK, pictured seemingly on set alongside Bill and English comedian David Williams, but they've yet to give a definitive answer on his involvement. But Dan is wonderfully loose-lipped, according to the website, and has confirmed that Bill will 100% be back. Quote from Dan Aykroyd on GhostbustersNews.com. I'm excited about this one. It's got a beautiful, heartfelt story, a great threat, some scary moments, and it brings back Annie Potts and Ernie Hudson Bill Murray and myself. And we've handed the torch to new people, Film Wolfhard, Paul Rudd, and Carrie Coon. Um, in the forthcoming sequel, according to the website, Murray and the original team members will reunite with the cast of Ghostbusters As- Afterlife, which comprises of Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Mechanic Grace, Finn Wolfhard, Logan Kim, and Celeste O'Connor. They'll share the screen with new additions to the franchise including Kumail Nanjiani, Patton Oswalt, James Alcaster, James Alcaster, I'm sorry, and Emily Allen Lind. So, yeah. Hmm. Sounds like there's going to be a farewell. Sounds like there's going to be a real farewell in Ghostbusters land. Stay tuned for that one. Ghostbustersnews.com if you want to stay on top of all that. Yeah, good times for that. Check in the tote board. Um, I know what this story is, says AMUCD. Of course you do. I just read it. Spinal tap found 12 on the volume tap. No, Judy, they did not. Uh, wait, this isn't about Bill Murray? Oh, if you haven't heard about Bill Murray, apparently he fell victim to a certain person's milkshake and its magical draw of males to her lawn. <laughs> And she's denying the relationship rumors now. I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay, sure. You're going to have to fill me in on that one later, I'm afraid. Um, Also, uh, you know, again, also, speaking of reunions, I'm telling you, gang, this, I said at the beginning of the year that this was going to be the year of the reunion. And it sure looks like it from here, because now we're hearing on top of if all of this isn't enough for you, the Beatles getting back together, Bill Wyman getting back together with the Stones, Bill Murray getting back to Ghostbusters. And now we've got Anne and Nancy Wilson working together again. Yes, it is true. From UltimateGuitar.com. Nancy Wilson of Heart has recently revealed that she's working on new music with her sister and fellow Heart bandmate Ann. In an interview with 102.3 WBAB, the musician discussed her upcoming projects, according to Blabbermouth, saying, right now I've been working on Tomboy stuff. 
uh, the most because I love the title. For one thing, it's almost like Boy Genius. But I've got a bunch of new ideas for songs. I've also been writing new stuff with Anne, too. Um, so it's a real creative time. I think being on tour with Nancy Wilson's heart right now, when I get home, I'm really going to dig into the other projects, including finishing some new material with Anne. So it's really a good time to be creative. And I've got a new studio in my house, so I sort of want to run tape on that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's been kind of a nice rediscovery of our relationship. Working on music together again. So, yeah, I'm really happy about that. You might remember that they had a, a bit of a fallout back in 2016. Where um, Ann and Nancy uh, had a little bit of a brouhaha. Ann's husband was arrested for assault on Nancy's sons. But they got back together for a 2019 tour and denied that they had any rifts following that. So, yeah. Hmm. Could be... Um, could be we see, um, yeah, a heart reunion in the making. Hmm. Possibility. I'd love to see that. I really would. I'd love to see that. And speaking of Anne, Anne's been very busy. We're going to get into that in just a second. But again, checking the tote board. Um, Amy City saying earlier this week, it was rumored that Bill Murray was dating Kellis. Oh, because her milkshake brought all the boys to the yard. Yes, I understand. Um, uh, do you know anything about the Pink Floyd cover bad that Roger Waters gave song rights to because they are so good? I heard this secondhand. I have no idea what you're talking about. I know that I know that there was talk about Pink Floyd selling their catalog. I think, however, that that was stopped. I think they, they decided against that at the last minute. Uh, either that or it's still in negotiations because you're talking huge money with that. That's the big thing these days where a lot of um, a lot of the uh, artists are um, selling their catalogs. Dylan's done it. Springsteen's done it. Uh, and Pink Floyd was in negotiation. I think they're looking at something like a billion dollars just for their catalog. Simon! Simon has popped in. Simon Lee. Well, well, well. Sorry I'm late. Yes, you are. Uh, anyway. Um, also, I wanted to bring this up. This just hit me today, and I really need to bring this up before we get out of here today. Um, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago. We... Um, we're talking about the most incredible thing. We're just talking about the most incredible thing that may ever happen. And I'm talking, of course, about Dolly Parton's new album, Rockstar. This is supposed to drop on November 17th, and we talked about it a little bit. Um, and the big fear was that and I said it before, and I'll say it again. This is going to go one of two ways. This is either going to be probably one of the one of the albums of the year, or this thing is going to go the way of Pat Boone's metal album and is going to be a complete train wreck. Um. Anyway, so today, and in case you haven't heard about this, Dolly Parton has recorded. Uh, or is in the process of finishing recording her first rock album. She, in fact, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for whatever reason. And I think the big thing was because Willie Nelson was last year. But be that as it may, um, Dolly said that she didn't deserve it, even though she was inducted anyway, and said that if she's going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, she might as well earn it. So she got together with everybody under the sun, and she has recorded a two-album set of rock and roll covers and originals that is going to be dropping in November. She has already released one single off of this, World on Fire, which has already charted to number one on Billboard's... Um, digital songs chart and 
today, two more tracks were released. You can hear these on YouTube, but I wanted to bring this up. Um, simply because we're, we're, we're going to keep an eye on this thing. But I'm here to tell you from the first two, the last two that she dropped today. And again, you can hear the tracks on YouTube. I think we're on to something here, gang. And you know me, if this thing is going to be a dumpster fire, I'm not going to say anything positive about it. But I got to tell you, two tracks were dropped today. One is her cover of Magic Man that she did with Ann Wilson. Um, and it was said, according to Billboard, she said, quote, I've always wanted to sing. I've always wanted a reason to sing Magic Man by heart. It was one of my first choices for the album. Uh, I was so happy that Ann Wilson agreed to sing it with me. Um, I gave it my dan, my darndest. We had a few lines that were not in the original, and that's true. There is a third verse that Ann wrote for this album. Um, a magic man with luring eyes changed the course of my own life. He was a magic man. I was oh so quick to learn. I was caught up in the burn of the magic man. No one else can understand unless you're loved a magic man. Um, and you can tell that you can tell that um, you can tell this was one of her first songs. Now, it, it, she, everybody, everybody does, you know, I mean, the song overall is good. It's, it's really good. But you can tell this was early in the session because it sounds like Dolly is kind of, Ann Wilson, of course, you know, Magic Man, she's giving it her all. But Dolly, you can see, and I've used this, I've used this descriptive before. You can see her kind of standing on the edge, looking down, going, boy, that's a heck of a drop. And it's a little too cautious with the vocals. The, the, the song overall, the production of it is really good. But you can hear Dolly kind of holding back just a little. And it's really a shame because you could tell how great this, this song could have been. It's very good. It's very, very good. Is it great? No. Is it really good? Yes. Um. But then came the second track. The second track is an original song that Dolly wrote called Bygones. Now, before we go anyplace, it's important that I tell you who is on this track. She is joined on vocals by Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Bass is being played by Nikki Six of Mockley Crew. And on guitar is John Five from the Marilyn Manson Band. And I am here to tell y'all, and this is not being condescending, this is not being patronizing, this is not being critical, this song kicks ass. You heard it from Gaynor. Bygones, Dolly Parton's new track from her upcoming album, Rockstar, kicks some serious ass. She saw, she's already said that this is one of her favorite tracks. Uh, quote, again, from Billboard, this song fits with so many couples and coupling my voice with Rob, one of my all-time favorite singers. When did you ever in your life think that Dolly Parton would rank Rob Halford as one of her all-time favorite singers? I uh, made it even more special. There is a point, and, I, and I, I can't stress this enough, that there is a point in this song where if I'm lying, I'm dying. Dolly gets a little sawdust in her voice. Our little country crooner starts a major growl. No, it is not Rob Halford. I listened to this song four times 
to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. There is some grit in little Miss Dolly that we didn't know about before. And I am here to tell you that this song is absolutely all killer, no filler. Go find this thing on YouTube. You're going to be amazingly surprised. Amazingly surprised. The album is called Rockstar, Dolly Parton's rock and roll album. Three tracks out. Uh, two out of three. Right now, I'd give this three and a half stars just for the three tracks that I've heard so far. Uh, find out for yourself. It drops uh, November 17th in um, vinyl, CD, digital. Uh, you really want to check this out for yourself. It is, um, and and like I said, you know me, fellow YouTuber. You know that if this thing was, you know, trash, I'm seeing Dolly in a whole new light. Yeah. Gone are the days of Porter Wagner and Buck Owens. Um, yeah. Uh, little sister saying that um, my son Eric and our nephew Colin just went and saw Hart at Red Rocks. Oh, cool. That's always a good thing. <coughs> That's a lot of fun. Um, there is one last thing before we do get out of here. And um, I'm bummed about this. This last story I'm really bummed about. Really bummed about it. Because I'm not going to be able to see it. And this is one of my all-time favorite favorite artists who is finally finally going out on tour on his own according to Rolling Stone Brian Eno you know him from his days with Roxy Music working with David Ferry Brian Ferry rather all the work that he's done with Robert Fripp, all of his amazing ambient solo work. He is now preparing to complete a full tour all on his own. It is a concert series entitled Ships. And he is going to only tour in Europe. And I am heartbroken over this. To be able to see Brian Eno in his splendor and glory. Uh, the run is going to center around his 2016 solo album, The Ship. It will feature the title track, all 21 minutes of it. It was inspired by the Titanic disaster, according to Rolling Stone. Um, it's going to begin October 21st in Venice with two shows. Then he's making uh, stops in Berlin, Paris... Utrecht in the Netherlands and we'll wrap up with another two shows set in London. Uh, tickets are now on sale if you're so inclined if you for uh, my European pals. But man, there's going to be a live setting. He's tapped the Baltic Sea Philharmonic to back him. You gotta love this. You gotta love this. Brian Eno on tour. And I can't see him. Yeah. I just hate myself sometimes. Life is so unfair. But yeah, that's gonna be happening pretty soon. Um, so yeah, if you're in Europe, send me bootlegs. Send me send me send me tapes, please. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, that is going to do it from here. I appreciate everybody for stopping in this evening. Thank you for all your comments. If you're watching the replay, be sure you give us comments on any of the stories that you heard tonight down in the comments thing below. We will answer you. That's not a problem. Until then, again, thank you so much for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll see you again next week. Have yourself a great week. We out. Whoa! <laughs>